Today on Being Disciples, prayer and worship both require sincerity and truth. How do we use these disciplines and why? Join me with special guests for a conversation on the topic. Welcome to the Being Disciples podcast with Pastor John. All notes and links can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, that's virtualstudywith.us. This is a weekly podcast published every Monday that is meant to help believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ to mature in their faith. These principles should be useful to anyone who listens, but especially for the believers who are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. You're invited on this journey to explore what it means to be a disciple. Let's begin by joining Pastor John with an opening prayer. Pastor John. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for so great a love that you have for us, that you sent your only begotten Son to redeem us and to restore us into a right relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, that for the joy set before you, you were willing to leave the majesty of heaven to come into this world, your creation, to redeem us and to restore us into a loving relationship with the Father. Thank you for laying down your life for us, both in the living of it and in the dying. In life, you showed us how we ought to live in intimacy with the Father, following the leading of Holy Spirit and loving one another. In death, you gave your body for us, bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. You were beaten, battered, and bloodied, even pierced to the shedding of your blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Now we ask you to give us the words to say and to open our ears and hearts to hear what you would say to us. Please bless all who join us today and all who hear this message on a recording. Amen. Welcome to episode 35, Prayer and Worship. Two important items for new believers to learn about in becoming disciples are proper worship and intimacy in relationship with God. Prayer and worship, at times, can be one in the same. I cannot think of a time when they are separate. If we consider prayer to be communication with God, then certainly it is most often a form of worship. And to worship God for who he is would certainly be a form of prayer. Let's take a look at some words in the Merriam-Webster online dictionary. Prayer as a noun. Definition one, first, an address, such as a petition to God or a God in word or thought. For example, set a prayer for the success of the voyage. Definition one, part two, a set order of words used in praying, an earnest request or wish. Definition two for prayer as a noun, the act or practice of praying to God or a God, such as kneeling in prayer. Worship. As a verb, definition one, to honor or show reverence for a divine being or supernatural power. Definition two, to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. Then worship as a noun, reverence offered a divine being or supernatural power, also an act of expressing such reverence. Just to round things off here, let's look at praise as a verb. Number one, to express a favorable judgment of to commend. Number two, to glorify a God or saint, especially by the attribution of perfections. And praise as a noun, an expression of approval, commendation, or worship. Now, I've heard it said that we worship God for who he is, and we praise him for what he has done. That seems to me to be a good guideline. It is through prayer and worship that we truly develop an intimate relationship with God. Time spent reading and studying scripture is indeed good and necessary to gain knowledge of God and who he is, to form a firm foundation on which we build our faith. Meditation on that knowledge can further deepen it in our spirit as it becomes more than mere head knowledge. Time spent in prayer with God can acknowledge the facts and ask questions of what we have yet to understand. This prayer or conversation is the establishment of a relationship between two parties, us and God. There are many types and styles of prayer, just as there are many types and styles of conversation or communication between two people. Each serves a purpose and contributes to the development of the relationship. Time spent in worship takes that relationship to a new level of intimacy. The general knowledge is made more personal as we dwell on who God is and acknowledge him through respect, honor, or devotion. To be intimate is to be of a very personal nature, marked by closeness and familiarity with one another. 
We know through previous studies, such as episode 16, Who God Says I Am, that God has a very intimate knowledge of us. Through prayer, worship, and knowledge of scripture, we gain more intimate knowledge of God. Only through the prayer and worship aspects can this truly become a vibrant, intimate relationship. Isaiah, a prophet of God, told the people how God would see his temple where the people gathered. Isaiah 56, 7 reads, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Twice he mentions house of prayer in reference to this temple. While Isaiah was speaking primarily of the temple in which the people worship, I don't think we would be in error to consider this as also being prophetic concerning the New Covenant believers. As we discussed in the series Building the Wall, episodes 3 through 8, we are the living stones, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are we not to be houses of prayer? Jesus references this passage of Isaiah, and it is recorded in three of the Gospels. Matthew 21, 13, Mark eleven seventeen, and Luke nineteen forty six. He was decrying what the temple had become. So let's look at Mark eleven seventeen. He writes, And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Jesus was also speaking of the physical temple, but the Holy Spirit had not yet been made available to all men as when poured out at Pentecost. Now we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Prayer is so essential that we are instructed to pray always and continuously. This is not to say that we ought to be on our knees reciting prayers 24-7. We should, however, be in constant awareness of the presence of God as he is dwelling within us and always present with us. We need to learn to practice the presence of God, which will benefit us in many respects. Paul affirms this passage in the letter to the believers at Corinth, in his letter to the believers at Rome. Romans 12, 1 states, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. I find it interesting that Paul says this is a form of worship, that is to show reverence to God, great respect, as an act of expressing such reverence. Some translations use rational service or reasonable service in place of the word worship in this verse. The act is the important thing here, which is a form of worship. This is one of many forms of worship. The Apostle Peter also affirms this as we discovered in the study Building the Wall when he wrote of believers being living stones. In 1 Peter 2, verses 4 and 5, he writes, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are those spiritual sacrifices through Jesus Christ, our example who gave himself as the perfect sacrifice for us. Our worship is a spiritual sacrifice offered to God. We are to offer ourselves completely to God, which is our reasonable service as he is the one who redeemed us and forgave our sins and has now offered us eternal life in fellowship with him. We have good reason to worship God. While speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus said to her, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Often in our prayer times, we ask God what his will is for our lives. Here is the starting point, worship. Worship in spirit and truth sets the standard by which we ought to live and the direction we are to follow. Our spirit longs for intimacy with the Father. Unfortunately, we give far too much attention to the soul and body, the soul being our mind, will, and emotion, the body being flesh and blood. The truth is that the soul and body ought to be subjected to the spirit, 
and our spirit subjected to the leading of Holy Spirit, then we can worship in spirit and truth. Other than the direction in general to worship God, I see nowhere that the spirit is commanded to worship God. I believe it has an innate desire and understanding to do so, as it is God who breathed into man the spirit of life. However, there are times when King David, in the Psalms, tells his soul to rejoice. We see keys of how we ought to worship throughout Scripture. Psalm 29, verse 2 states, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in splendor of holiness. Almighty God, being our creator, is worthy of our worship and praise, for he is holy, and he calls us to holiness. Psalms 95, verse 6 states, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Here we see that we are called to a position of humility, both in physical positioning and in spiritual attitude. Psalms 132, verse 7 states, Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. We are to humbly approach God with our worship. We go to him, and he ought not need to come find us. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we read, And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus gave us the example of resisting the devil and of not worshiping the things of this world. As he says, it is written that we are to worship God only and not the idols of this world. In Mark chapter 7, verses 68, we read, And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. Here we see a warning to sincerely worship God from our heart, our innermost being, our spirit. Worship that is mechanical, religious, or merely a tradition is offered in vain. We are to worship in spirit and truth. We read in the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 30 to 31. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. God hears the worship and receives the prayer of those who are members of the family of God. Following Christ gives us access to God through him. The author of the book of Hebrews writes in chapter 12, verses 28 and 29, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. We are to offer worship with a heart of thanksgiving and an attitude of reverence and awe toward God. In the book of Revelation, we read in chapter 4, verses 9 and 11, and whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. We are to give glory, honor, and thanks to God who is seated on the throne. God is on the throne and lives forever, and he will receive glory and honor and power, for all was created by him and for him. In Revelation 7, verses 11 and 12, we read, And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. All who are in the presence of the throne of God humble themselves. This is an example for us when we approach God with worship. They ascribe to God blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might. We continue to read in Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 and 18. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, 
We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. All that lives in all things were created by Almighty God and will revert to him at the end of days. The kingdoms of this world will have nothing to offer because it is all his, not theirs, as he created all. We again see that all who are around the throne humble themselves and worship God. He takes back all creation and reigns for all eternity. Like those around the throne, we ought to have a healthy fear of the Lord as we enter into worship and prayer. We're going to pause here for a couple of reminders from Garrett to where you can find the notes for your own study. And then I'll be joined by a special guest, Miss Kimberly Brown, speaking of worship from the First Trinity Church of God in Christ in Fridley, Minnesota. Let's take just a moment to remind you that all notes and links can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, it's virtualstudywith.us. Feel free to use this broadcast or the notes as you disciple someone else, as you lead a small group, or as you dive deeper into your own study. We will now move into conversation with this week's guest. Okay, so thanks for those reminders, Garrett. Uh, we're back now, and then I have with me a special guest, Miss Kimberly Brown. Kimberly, welcome to the show. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. Now, Kimberly is the worship leader at First Trinity Church of God in Christ, and it's in Fridley, Minnesota. And she also has a couple of CDs out and working on another one. And you have a beautiful voice. I always enjoy hearing you perform. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I would think as far as worship goes, being a worship leader, I've been in the worship services at your church, and it always feels like it's not a performance. You're actually leading the people into worship. And I think I've been to churches where it seems like it's more of a concert and more of a performance. So I appreciate that. How do you see that? Thank you. Thank you. I would agree with you 100%. I've always been taught by those that kind of teach the praise and worship portion that there is an audience of one, and that's God. And our goal is to invite people to worship with us, and we are worshiping God. So it is not a performance, it's ministry. I look at it as ministry. This is not one of my concerts where people have paid to come and be entertained. This is worship, and it must be spirit-led. And I think that's the difference. I also have the view that prayer and worship are commingled. It's not like you can separate the two, that if I'm actually praying, I'm communicating with God. And then if I'm worshiping, I'm still communicating with God, just in a different fashion. But as I worship, yeah. I like to actually pray the lyrics of the song that I'm using to worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you see it? I would agree with that because so much of worship is what we're saying. And so, so many times it is a prayer or an exhortation or an adoration to God, which is a lot of times also what we do when we pray. We don't just ask him, but we're thanking him and we're adoring him, worshiping him. And it's all about the state of the heart, isn't it? That connection. Absolutely. You can't worship without the heart. You can perform without the heart, but you cannot worship God without the heart. So I put in my teaching part, I talked about prayer first and then linked the worship to it saying time spent in worship takes the relationship to a new level of intimacy. Why do you think that is that music has that effect on us? I think it's because it enhances the relationship. And again, uh, music can be so beautiful or have an amazing beat or a beautiful melody, but it's the message, it's the lyrics, it's the words. Once that connects with the heart, it just, it takes it to another level. It's interesting that how the nature of our humanity, we can hear a certain song and it'll trigger certain memories. So like mm -hmm. when I was into some of the seventies rock, I could hear mm -hmm. the songs now and remember a certain episode of life. Exactly. So I think there's something innately built into us that God has that thing about worship built into us. And so like when Paul writes in Corinthians, you're not your own for you were bought with a price to so glorify God in your body. I think there's actually a link with the worship there that there's something that triggers us within when we hear music. I would agree with that, but I'd also like to add that you can hear the same song and have had a new experience. That song will have a new meaning or a different meaning 
because of that experience that you just had. And so when you hear that song again after that, you may have a complete different perspective, a higher level of worship even, I'll put it like that, because of life's experiences. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. One example that might be uh, the song Oceans. I forget who sang it. It talks about take me where my feet would not wander or take me yeah. uh, into the deeper part of the ocean. Let me raise above the waves, that sort of thing. But it was all about trusting God, increasing faith. And when that was big, the church I attended played that almost every week, probably not every okay. week, but it seemed like it. But I started just praying that song, crying from my heart to the Lord, take me to this level. And it wasn't long after that, that I was delivered from a religious spirit and freed up to just really worship. I was also hooked up with a prophetic group that traveled the Great Lakes region of the United States doing ministry. And all of a sudden I was doing stuff that I never envisioned myself doing. So I think Amen. using songs as a prayer, whenever I hear that song now, I kind of look back at it as a turning point. So just like you were saying, mm -hmm. it kind of creates a link. It does. Absolutely does. So how do you think worship ties us into the teachings of Peter about that we're living stones and that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit? I think that when we participate in worship and when we worship God, that his spirit is present with us. And just like with prayer, and just like Paul said, I must decrease so that he can increase. We're asking for more of his anointing, for him to breathe his breath on us, the breath of life, those living waters and blessings shaken down, you know, pressed together, overflowing. Worship is such a vital part of that. Worship is so intimate. It is that intimate time that we spend with God. We can do privately when we're at home, when we're in our prayer closet. But when we're driving in our car and it's beautiful when we come together at church and we're collectively worshiping, but it's still, even in collective worship, even in church, it's still a level of intimacy because it's me and God. It's you and God, you worshiping him for yourself. And I just think that you don't get to that, to experience that feeling that presence, if you don't worship God for yourself, that intimate relationship, that level that I desire for others. When I'm leading worship, I desire it for others. That's part of the reason I do what I do because I've experienced it. And the beauty of it is it's overwhelming. It's unexplainable. And I, I pray that God just, he gives me the song. He gives me the right songs. You know, he gives me the timing of the songs. I don't know what people need when they're sitting there, but God knows. God so knows what they need. So that's just like when I'm preaching or for this show, it's a matter of give us the words to say so that yes. they can hear what they need to hear. Yes. We don't necessarily know what point the audience is at, what they need today, whereas exactly. the Holy Spirit truly does. And when I said earlier, we have to be spirit led. Because there's so much planning that can go into worship time and praise and worship time and songs planned out for weeks. Some churches plan out for months, but it yet has to be space to allow the spirit to come in. If I'm in the middle of worship and I got these three songs and everybody knows what three songs we're doing today, but the spirit says, sing, thank you, Lord. Simple praise like, thank you, Lord. Well, I have to be able to allow the spirit to lead me into, thank you, Lord. And I thank God that I go to a church where we have that freedom, that when the spirit says, move this way or move that way, that I'm able to do that. The team follows or if someone else on the team is leading, I follow. The musicians are always in a place that the spirit of God is leading us and we follow because again, I don't know in the natural, you know, who's sitting there or what they need, but God knows. And he will send the song, he will send the words in the prayer, he will direct us. And if we follow him, if we're obedient to the spirit, people are abundantly blessed. You'll have people come up later and go, oh, I was just thinking about that song. Or I needed that. That song you sang about the storm or that song you sing about the rain. Um, it's exactly what I needed. And in that moment, I said, thank you, Lord, for, you know, for giving that to me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what, what God will do need. if we just let him. Yes. We just opened the door for the opportunity. So that's one thing I've enjoyed about your services at the church you attend is there always seems to be that little bit of spontaneity. Mm -hmm. It's not 
so tightly directed that God can't move. And I've attended yeah. both types where it was to the minute everything. And I also attended a church where worship didn't end until people stopped coming up for prayer. So they were prepared to just roll with it all the time. And the okay. pastor would adjust from there. So it's okay. uh, it's much more enjoyable when you're allowing the spirit to move and, and direct the traffic. Amen. Amen. So I think you kind of answered this, but one verse I've always kind of struggled with is in John, I think Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman. He says, the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him worship in spirit and truth. So does that really just go back to the fact that we're really trying to connect from the abundance of our heart, from our innermost being? Is that what that spirit and truth is? It does. It does. Spirit and truth. And those qualities bring about transparency. They bring about purity. They bring about humbleness. They bring about those qualities that are required to be that type of true worshiper uh, to God. And we have to keep our eyes and focus on him. I'll be really honest that uh, I've seen or have ex experienced uh, places where worship leaders are celebrities. They're almost idolized. They are the attraction of the ministry or of the church. And sometimes it's easy to get puffed up when you have all of this glory coming to you, you know, what you did, what you did. And we have to keep our hearts pure and true and focused on God because it is not about us. We are the vessel that God is, has chosen to use for that time, for such a time as this, for that service. And God can use anyone he wants to. I'm so honored when God uses me in that way. It's not about me, but you're right. It has to be in, in truthfulness, in his spirit and truthfulness. And we as worship leaders have to make sure that eyes are not on us, that we are not taking credit for the move of the spirit or for what God is doing in people's lives. All glory be to him. So do you think that's really the only variation there is between a right way and wrong way to worship, that there is really no wrong way to worship if you're doing it the right way, mm -hmm. as long as it's on, the focus is on him and not us or the leader or the, the, Yes, whatever. the focus is on him and it's from the heart. Because when it's from the heart, when it's pure from the heart, you can't go wrong. When you recognize who he is and what he's done for you, that spirit of gratefulness and thankfulness and adoration. You can't go wrong uh, when the heart is pure, when it's in truth, when you're uh, worshiping him, when you're giving him the glory, giving him the credit. You, you can't go wrong in that sense. We can go wrong when we take our eyes off of him and we start to look around and see that people are looking at us, that we are the representative of Christ. We can go wrong when we start wanting to perfect the song so much so that I'm making sure that I sound good or that I look good in front of the people. It sounds funny, but I say this all the time, Pastor. Worship would be so cool if the praise band and the worship leaders were behind the veil. <laughs> we were in the back of the church. We were even in the balcony. And you know, worship could just go forth with the spirit and the people. They don't need to look at me to get it. You might need to hear me, but you don't need to look at me to get it. I want you to hear the message. I want you to feel the spirit. And sometimes we are the distraction. Well, the same as being in the crowd worshiping, you know, you have the feeling, well, if I raise my hands to worship, someone going to look at me funny. And then, you know, I always get over it by saying, you know what, if you're looking at me while you're worshiping, you're not that's, really worshiping anyway. So I don't care. What that's you think. right. That's, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. But of course, at my church, you fit right in because hands yeah. go up. <laughs> In fact, I'd feel out if I didn't, out. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, why are they sitting down? But, <laughs> but I grew up mm -hmm. in the Catholic church and they had the choir up in the balcony behind everything. But I found as a kid, I was always turning around to look up at them anyway. Yeah, so yeah. You know, I also attended a church once where we met in an auditorium at a high school and the band was set up way over on one edge. And then the podium and stuff for the pastor was kind of towards the center. And they really were out of the picture. You know, they, they weren't taking the limelight. The light okay. was on them and they were leading. Mm -hmm. And they truly, like you, they truly led us into worship. 
a new pastor came and younger guy and, you know, the, the church building stuff in mind. And it was more about building the system than honoring God. I think that okay. all of a sudden they decided that we're going to spread the band out across the whole stage. And then when I come out to speak, I'll just take this center microphone. And, you know, in theory, it shouldn't be any big deal, but it, what it really started doing was putting the focus on the band, on their equipment, on the lights on all that stuff mm -hmm. and kind of lost something in my book. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. there is a difference, I think. Yes, it is. Often in times of prayer, we start asking God for his will for our lives. And I've always looked at this as being kind of step one, that new believers need to learn two things, how to truly worship and how to pray so they can truly build that relationship with God. Because without that foundation, you know, what are they going to build on? What are they going to do? Would you mm -hmm. think that's the same? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And it starts with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. I think it also begins with simply recognizing the blessings. I talk to new believers and, and they're not sure what to pray, how to pray, what to focus on, all of those things. And I say, you know what? Start with just counting your blessings. Because when you start to count your blessings, you'll start to recognize and realize how blessed you are, all that he's done for you, all that he has provided for you, all of this provision and protection. And the list will be so overwhelmingly long till you'll just be thanking him so much. And then we start seeking him and asking him for, for that direction, for strength, for more faith, for wisdom, uh, for all of those things. Right. And you're kind of touching on another place I like to teach people is learning to walk in a spirit of thanksgiving. So last mm -hmm. week for the Thanksgiving episode, my wife and I just had a little chat about how we try to walk in a spirit of thanksgiving. It shouldn't just be Thanksgiving Day, it shouldn't just be the month of November, but right, right. daily am I, am I walking in a spirit of thanksgiving, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which to me is really freeing, really. It is. And can I jump in here and say something? You can. When you, when you walk in a spirit of thanksgiving, it changes your perspective on life. And like you said, Thanksgiving is not just one day. We should have a spirit of thanksgiving every day not just during the holidays, not just during the weekends, not just when we have money, not just when we feel good, not just when we get a raise or things are going our way. But there's so much to be thankful for. Like I said, it, it changes your perspective of how you look at things and you won't allow just any little thing to upset you or to frustrate you because you'll realize I still have so much more to be thankful for. Thank you, God. I'm on my way somewhere. I got a flat tire, but thank you, God, I have a car. I can get the flat tire changed and keep going on my way. But thank you. Thank you, God, that I have transportation. Thank you, God, that I have a brother to call, a friend to call. Thank you, God, for my cell phone. You know, and it, it can be so small, but there's so much blessing in a heart of thanksgiving. I was talking to a friend about a month ago, and she was breaking it down. She said, you know, when I get in bed at night, if I'm exhausted or have a lot on my mind, I just stop and I say, thank you, God, for this pillow. Thank you for my bed, God. Thank you for this warm comforter. She started naming these small things. And I said, wow, that's, you know, what a great way to go to bed. You know, you do your little prayer and then you jump in the bed and then your mind's still racing on all that you didn't do for the day or all you got to do tomorrow. She says, no, I just lay there. I look around the room think about my family. And I just continue to just in a deep sense, say, thank you, God. She said, sometimes I just pray myself to sleep. She said, cause I'm saying to myself, thank you, God, for this pillow, for all the hands that prepared this pillow at the factory, at the company, <laughs> whoever, whoever put the plastic on this pillow, who put it in the box, who shipped it to the store, who ordered, you know, she just, went on and on. And I was like, wow. She said, you know, there's hundreds of people involved in your one little blessing. And I just, I thought that was so profound, but it just really opened my eyes. So when I say that spirit of Thanksgiving changes your perspective, you won't get upset so easy or frustrated so easy when you start really thanking him for the blessings that he's already bestowed upon you. Well, sounds like I get along with her because I teach people, mm -hmm. you want to fall asleep comfortably? I lay down and I'll thank God for four specific things of the day. Mm, the mm. first one is always my beautiful wife that he gave me, which is such a yes. blessing. But yes. then the other three, I try to find something unique to the day. And mm. There's times where I have to lay there a little bit to come up with that fourth one, but, <laughs> but I do. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's as simple as you gave me breath today, but yes. when you think about your day, you can find things to be thankful for and to fall asleep. So in many. That, that kind of prepares your spirit to receive. Yes. Mm-hmm. So in Psalms, it says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Now, I know when you're leading worship, that's not so easy to do all the time, especially mm-hmm. if you're in a skirt or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there is something to kneeling or bowing or things like that that humble ourselves before the Lord when we worship yes. at times. In your private time, do you find yourself doing more of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a, a little prayer room here in my house. There's a chair in there. There's a small table. Sometime I. Uh, yeah, put a candle on or, or have a little lamp or light on. There's a Bible in there. I get on my knees. Sometime I just, I go in there and lay down. I'll take my comforter because I know I'm, I'm going to gonna spend some time in the prayer closet. Sometime I put on the little Google Play, you know, worship or instrumental worship. And I just lay before the Lord because what better place to be than adoring and thanking God? We have to stop and take time to do that. You're right. In church, sometimes I can't always kneel or bow down, but I can bow my heart right. and I can bow, I can bow my mind. I can understand that I have to surrender because to me, those are also signs of surrender. I have to surrender everything that I have to God. I have to recognize and understand how great he is, how big he is, how mighty he is. You know, I went to, to Cancun. I was really blessed to go to Cancun, Mexico last month for my anniversary, 27th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. And thank you. I would wake up and look at the sun. This is just weird to me. <laughs> I would look at the sun and say, this is the same sun that I wake up to in Minnesota. It's the same sun that's here in Mexico. And I would look at the ocean and it was endless. As far as I could see was ocean, was water. And it made me think of that song, The Love of God, that said, if the sky was a scroll and the ocean was ink, I could write until the ocean ran dry. And it still would, I would still not completely describe and define God's love for me. How can I not surrender my heart, my mind, my body, my life to some, someone so great that loves me so much? It, it's overwhelming. If you right. stop and think about it, it's overwhelming. There's, there's no way not to bow down and worship him. They can do the same up on the North shore over Lake Superior. You can't see the other shore, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. somehow it sounds a little different in Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, same, same concept, just to look at God's creation and say, he's so mighty. He spoke this to into existence from and created me. I just, just like I said, it's, it's, it's just overwhelming how great God is and how much he loves us. And it's just a pleasure. Something else I learned in Cancun, when the, you know, the hotel attendants and people, if, if they do something for you and you say, thank you, they don't say, oh, you're welcome. They say, it's my pleasure. That's probably and the I, proper that, way to that, respond. It is. It hit me. It's my pleasure. And so, you know, now I said, I'm going to start telling people it's my pleasure. It's God's pleasure to bless us. It is God's pleasure to heal us. It's his pleasure to provide for us. And in the same breath, it's my pleasure. I'm honored to serve God. I'm honored to worship him. I'm so, it's such a pleasure, you know, to to edify him and glorify him, just to thank him. And we are called to be servant leaders like he was. Yes. So I hope if nothing else, people are starting here that the idea of prayer and worship and the idea of a relationship with God really comes back to the very base of getting it from the very depths of our heart, the abundance of our heart, our most inner being that when it starts rising up out of there, that can really develop that relationship. Yes. And that changes your life. You just have to add that changes your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So that brings me to Psalms 132. It says, let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Well, we don't get to his footstool to bow down on worship until we've really developed that relationship where we're sincere and humble and really pouring out from our most inner being, thanksgiving and adoration. The gospel of Mark, uh, Jesus said to some people, he says, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far Mm. from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines, the commandments of men. 
I think what that says to me is we have to be careful in our church services or whatever events we go to that it's not just a routine, not just an activity, a religious exercise, that it truly does have to come from the heart. It does. And we also have to pray for God's direction and discernment so that we recognize when it's not from the heart. A lot of times you'll say, oh, just because pastor so-and-so said it or worship leader so-and-so did it, we want that discerning spirit so we know when it's not from the heart. Because it's easy to get caught up um, with flesh and with man and in, with programming and religiosity. <laughs> that's the word I like to use. I don't know if that's a word. But it's a big deal when it can distract someone from true worship. Well, who did Jesus have his most conflicts with? It was the religious leaders, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's not about religion. He's about relationship. No, that's right. So Friday night, I was so important to have, have that relationship. Right. Friday night, I was invited to a worship time. Uh, One of the mega churches up here was doing a Friday night worship service, where there's no sermons, no preaching, nothing but just the band leading in worship. But knowing the place, I know it's a light show and it's not that the music's bad. I'm not judging those who are there because I'm sure there's plenty of them there that are just truly worshiping. And that's great. I love to see the opportunity for it. I just wasn't led to go because I just felt for me, that it was going to an event, to an activity, not because it's where I wanted to be to worship. I hope the people that invited me weren't offended by it, but I just decided, nah, I'm not going to go. The opposite of that is we host a Thursday night fire pit worship. So every Thursday night, we just light up the fire pit, turn on some worship music. It's not live, it's recorded stuff, but okay. I, feel it's, I feel it's anointed that if people are really mm-hmm. pressing into the Lord. And the idea is we'll have some chit chat for a little bit, but then I'll turn up the music. So it's hard to have a conversation. Okay. And then the idea is whoever comes, it's for you to connect with God one-on-one. You worship and then you try to listen and hear what the spirit is saying to you, whether it's tonight or tomorrow or, you know, whenever it comes, but, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you come and connect with God and there's no one bringing a word. If you feel like you need to pray for somebody or you need prayer, take somebody off to the Mm -hmm. side to go do it and then come back to the fire pit and worship some more. And that's truly how I was delivered from that religious spirit. Through doing that for quite some time, God just so totally freed me up because again, I was praying out the songs I was worshiping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a problem that if I'm singing a song and it doesn't ring true with me, we do it all for you, God. Well, if I feel I'm not really doing it all for God, Mm -hmm. I can't sing that. Right. I start changing the lyrics in my heart to, I wish I was doing it all for you, God, or I want to do it all for you, God, you know, uh-huh. or I just don't right. sing it. But for me, it's, right. it's so in tune with prayer. I'm not going to sit there and lie to God. I'm That's right. in my life where I'm at right now, Lord, I'm really not doing it all for you or, you know, whatever he already knows. He already knows. Yeah. Yeah, so who am I <laughs> fooling? True. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted to circle back just for a moment. I know the culture of church has changed. And a lot of churches say, well, we turn all the lights off so that uh, people don't feel uncomfortable in their worship and they can worship free. But when you turn all the lights off and you put the spotlight on one person or you put it on, you know, small band, well, they're, they're now getting all that focus. And so I know that's a whole nother conversation and a whole nother podcast, but how we're setting the atmosphere for worship also matters. It makes a difference in how people worship, how they perceive it, how they understand it. How inviting is it? Yeah, and that can be good I, or I bad. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it, I think it all depends on who's doing it, what their heart is, and why mm-hmm. they're doing it, and mm-hmm. really the integrity of why they say they're doing it. Yeah. So I've seen and, it go and both ways. We, sometimes, we, like you just said, we make it feel like an event or like they're coming to a show or a concert. Because honestly, when you turn all the lights off and people don't have to, it's easy for them to sit there and just watch the show. Right, right. So there's a verse in Hebrews chapter 12 that says, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. So I think Mm. when it says acceptable worship, it then defines it with reverence and awe. How would you describe reverence and awe for God? You know what? I'm going back to, (laughs) it sounds so simplistic, but I'm going back to pure truth, you know, pure transparency of heart, gratefulness, humbleness. That leads you to reverence. It leads you to adoration. 
which to me, I just, I, I really can't even describe adoration. It's, it's such a deep, great word, but it goes back to the heart. For me, it goes back to the heart. You just can't worship him with the wrong heart. You have to recognize who he is. And once you recognize who he is, it just opens your eyes to so much. I could go on and on, but pastor, I'd be saying the same thing over and over. <laughs> that's, right, you know, right. that, that's my response. And I just, I pray for people when I'm leading worship that their understanding is open, that their minds and their hearts are open, that something in the song, something in the message, uh, that the spirit touches them in a way that helps them begin to understand who God is and, and how much he loves us. And when you do that, it's like there's no way not to adore him or to be grateful. It's like someone comes up to you and says, I've watched your struggle. I've seen what you do. I've, I've been praying for you. and da, 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 da. I just wanted to bless you. I'm paying off your mortgage so that you can be free to do what God wants you to do. I'm taking care of this debt for you. There's no way for you just to go, oh, thank you, and go on about <laughs> your business. Right. You're going to be like, what? You did what? <laughs> you know, you're going to stop for a minute and then it's going to hit your brain because I always tell my husband when we watch these shows, you know, when they give people blessings like that, you know, would you cry? You know, would you cry? And you always want to <laughs> say, no, I wouldn't cry. But when it hits you, the overwhelming thing that they just did for you, it's going to bring tears to your eyes. It's going to be, what? You did what for me? You're paying off my, my house, my mortgage, you know? And so when you think about that God sent his son and his son gave his life for me that I could have eternal life, there's no way to not reverence him, to not adore him. But if you don't recognize it, if you don't understand it, then it may not mean that much to you. So I pray when I'm leading or I just you know, pray in general that through worship and people's relationship that they begin to recognize who God is. They begin to understand what he's given us and how much he loves us. Because when we truly do that with our heart, when we truly do that with our heart, it changes our lives. It changes our perspective. It changes the way we look at situations. It changes the way we treat each other. It changes the way we treat other people. It changes how we witness and how we evangelize. It doesn't allow us to judge people. It, it would allow us to open up and offer them the love of Christ, the love of God through us. It does so much. You know, you can't really describe it. And I think our spirits really discern when something is real and genuine, driven by love, as opposed to an ulterior motive. Absolutely. And so when we discern it's truly an act of love that hits our emotions so much differently mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than just somebody doing it because, well, it's the right thing to do. It's mm -hmm. not because I love you. Mm -hmm. It's because it's the right thing to do. We mm -hmm. can kind of tell the difference, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's like the presence of God. You feel it when it's there. You know, sometimes you're at a church or you're at a prayer service and it's like, mm. and then other times, you're like, oh, wow, it just, it just hits you. And you know, when it's real, you know, because your spirits just connect. They just do. One thing about developing that relationship with God will realize that he is worthy to receive all that worship and praise. And, uh, in the book of Revelation, it gives us that example of when the 24 elders mm -hmm. cast down their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and yes. power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. So to understand that we really aren't our own, as Paul told us, we are mm -hmm. his. So I always go through a little thing when I'm praying saying, God, you made me, so I'm yours. You redeem me, so I am yours. And I've yes. surrendered myself to Christ, so I am yours. I'm not my own. I am yours. So do with me as you will. See what yes. you do from there. Would you be kind enough to pray for the people that are listening that they would have a deepened sense of worship as they go through their Christian lives? I always say it's a simple, it's just not easy Christian life. Mm -hmm. It's simple, it's just not easy. That's so good. we talked about a lot of things, and it does sound simple. But to actually apply them isn't always easy. So would you pray that people can really get this into their heart? Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Dear God, I thank you right now for this opportunity to pray for those that are new to the body of Christ, God. We love them as you love them, God. I pray right now that their hearts and their minds will be open, 
that their relationships would be stronger with, that they would be deeper, that they would get to experience true worship, that they would begin to understand, God, who you are, what you've done, God, and how much you love, how much you love us, God. I just thank you, God, for this opportunity. Lord, show them the way. God, show them those places that they should go. Close every door that they don't need to even consider walking through, God. Open the doors for them, God. Make the journey sweet, oh God. Life is not always easy, God, but with you, we have hope, we have assurance, oh God, that we are victorious because of you, God. Give them peace. Give them comfort, God. Give them understanding, God. I pray that in their prayer time and in their worship time, oh God, they don't just make requests, God, but that they listen, listen to your voice, that their heart hears, oh God, what you have for them, the things you have called them to do, the gifts you have put inside them, oh God, that they would use them, God, for your glory, that they would be salt and that they would be light, oh God, as this journey becomes sweeter every day, God. I thank you, Lord, for them, my new brothers and my new sisters, oh God because we are all family in the body of Christ. And I just pray continued blessings in, through, and for them in your son's name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Garrett, amen. do you have any questions for her? Oh, geez, no, I kind of got comfortable there and was just enjoying listening to the wonderful banter that God had uh, placed there between you and, and Kim. And, and it just- amen. I have to agree with everything that Kim was saying and being a part of the, the whole worship experience. Um, me being a boy from the 90s, well, oh. born in the 70s, but when Christian music was like the best of the best, it was like the 90s. And, yeah. and now it's a whole different culture. It is. It's a different culture, different thing. And you find those things that resonate with you that can help you make it through your day. That's why I always love having Christian music on or falling asleep yes. to Falling asleep to God's word and people who are professing that is mm -hmm. just such a great way for me to drift off, but also for mm -hmm. me to worship too. Or I find the moments where the quiet times when I'm driving back and forth in my car to, um, to take care of my fiance, she's got cerebral palsy. So okay. I help take care of her, but I always am praying in that 30 minute window. What's going on? What are we going to do today? Here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's just that whole wonderful experience of worship. And you can go yeah. anytime. It's not, again, I, mean, I know I've said many times, it's not a Sunday and Wednesday thing. It's an everyday. That's right. It's get daily. Up, renew your mind and keep that focus all day long. Because you can go to him like he's sitting right next to you in the passenger seat or he's walking along you. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that is so cool that we have a guy yes. that wants that from us. That's I, amazing. Thank you for sharing with us today. That was, uh, welcome. That was a wonderful, wonderful You're news welcome. to hear. Thank you. I do a workshop and it's called Worship is a Lifestyle because it's our life. It's not something we put on. Like you said, yep. Sunday, Wednesday, it's it's daily. It's us. You know, it's how we live. And, and these, are, these are the people I want to surround myself with, with these people such as yourself, John, and the, and you. the people who yes. want to live it daily and not just show up and be a pew potato, as we've heard right, before. Right, right, <laughs> right. And you know. I got to tell you guys, too, I don't know if you know about this guy, but he's on YouTube. His, um, I don't know his real name, but his YouTube page is called Dappy, D-A-P-P-Y, Keys, K-E-Y-S. He okay. is a p pianist. He has the most beautiful worship music um, videos on YouTube. It's, it's like a long medley of, of uh, worship songs, and he has scriptures. So it's not really of him playing few of them might be but most of them are scriptures that come up and it's called dappy keys okay when i say it oh my lord it will just it will just take you in you can listen you know in the car or at home cleaning i go to bed listening to him so many times and when the songs come on you'll know i mean like oh how great thou art or worthy of it all you know you'll you'll be thinking the songs and then the scripture pops up and it's just um and Pastor John, that's something for your new converts. I mean, I'd love to promote my own music, but for your new converts, that is such a powerful tool for them to watch this guy's YouTubes. I'm telling you, they are just amazing. Cool. So speaking of that, is yeah. there a place people can go to check out your CDs? Yes. Um, I'm all over the internet, Kimberly Brown Music. They can find me on Facebook, on YouTube, my website, Kimberly Brown Music.com. I'm on, I think I'm on like SoundCloud and Spotify and most of those. 
Um, but I have a song called The Lamb and it's a worship song. It's called The Lamb by Kimberly Brown. Um, if they would check that out, it simply says we've come to worship him and magnify his name because he's so great. I think they would enjoy and hopefully appreciate <laughs> that song. Cool. I'm going to go listen now. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly gonna... Brown Music, you'll find me easier under Kimberly Brown Music. It's called The Lamb. So, Miss Kimberly Brown, we thank you very much for being on the show today. It was a joy for me to speak with you, as it always is. Just, just the little different setting that I'm used to, but thank you for being here. Thank you. It was my pleasure. All right, and I invite everyone else to join us next time on Being Disciples. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Being Disciples. The show is hosted on Podbean. You can find it at beingdisciples.podbean.com. Again, it's beingdisciples.podbean.com. There you can find all episodes of this podcast. There's also a patron button you can use to support this broadcast if you feel so moved. And we thank you. You can also find us on your favorite podcast platform. The notes and links for this show can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, that's virtualstudywith.us, virtual study with us. Feel free to use this broadcast or the notes as you disciple someone else, as you lead a small group, or as you dive deeper into your own study. From the site, you can contact us if you would like to join a study group. If you have questions or comments for Pastor John, you can contact him by email at john.anoka at virtualstudywith.us. That's John, J-O-H-N dot Anoka, A-N-O-K-A at virtualstudywith.us or through the contact form on the main page of the website. Please subscribe to this podcast and join us again next week as we learn more about being disciples.